three years ago, Earth underwent a cataclysm. The animals and plants in the world started to change and evolve crazily and inexplicably. The entirety of human civilization was hit hard with countless casualties. In order to protect the world from being destroyed and uphold world peace, humans have awakened the ability to control monsters and use them to fight. He is a normal high school student whose parents were killed during the cataclysm. However, not only he does have a powerful and mysterious beauty protecting him, he even awakened a mysterious system and when it comes to taming and raising monsters, he shall reign supreme. However, the Earth's cataclysm also caused the bizarre disappearance of his grandfather. In the face of deadly dangers that are coming one after another, there is only one path he can take, and that is to become powerful and become the strongest monster trainer, also to succeed in evolving an epic grade familiar. However, in the future, he will one day realize that the epic grade monster evolution is just the beginning. Our main protagonist's name is Gao Peng. He is 18 years old, a student at Chang'an Third Senior High School, and his dream is to become the Imperial Ambassador. Gao Peng was walking home while wondering why he often sees some strange interfaces and think he was hallucinating because of the stress recently. Gao Peng opened the gate of the apartment and started to walk upstairs. Suddenly he noticed something and confirmed that he was not hallucinating. The virtual screen said the monster's name is Grey Disc Spider, it was level 3, its status is healthy and irritable. Also the monster's weakness is flame. Gao Peng remembers that the spider owned by Grandma Chen and his teacher Murong said that Grey Disc Spiders are very gentle. Suddenly the spider attacked him, fortunately, he avoided it but he was shocked. Gao Peng was running to the stairs while calling Granny Chen's name because her spider came out to bite people. The spider got up and attacked him again but Gao Peng avoided it and run again. Suddenly when he looked back the spider was near to him, and while he was panicking he remembered that the spider was weak in flame, then he lit the lighter and throw it at the spider. The spider burns and collapsed to the ground but he realizes that the fire is too small, then the monster gets up and looked at him angrily. Gao Peng realizes it and starts to run while thinking he needs to pass one more floor and he'll be home because Big Purple is at his home. Gao Peng continues to run while the spider follows him and attacks him. Gao Peng finally arrive at his room door, but suddenly the spider jumped toward him. Gao Peng called Big Purple and it opens his door room, then attack the spider. Big Purple come out into the room, which made the spider shake in fear. Gao Peng asks the spider if it still wants to play with the Big Purple in his back. The spider crawls up to the ceiling quickly and runs. Gao Peng said it was a fast runner. Suddenly Big Purple said she want to eat and asks him why he was so late and he's starving her to death. The monsters are divided into a total of two forms, the combat form and the non-combat form. In the non-combat states, the monster will reduce its size to reduce energy consumption and can also slowly recover some minor damage. Also, when the owner bond with a monster, they can communicate with it telepathically, and his monster named is Dazzy's. Gao Peng pat Da Zai's head and said he'll cook for her. He enters the kitchen and asks Da Zai's to put his bag on the cabinet. Then he prepares himself to start showing his real skill. Gao Peng chops the meat and other ingredients, then prepare his special nutrition dinner. Da Zai smells her food and then eats it. Gao Peng reminds Da Zai to eat slowly and then checks Da Zai's data. Da Zai monster's name is purple-backed yellow clawed centipede. She was level 7, and her attribute was yin and poison system. Da Zai's status is healthy and happy, also her weakness is thunder flame. Suddenly Gao Peng saw that Da Zai's upgraded from a normal quality monster to a promotion of elite quality. The quality of monsters is divided into ordinary quality, elite quality, and perfect quality from low to high. The higher the quality of the monster, the greater its potential of the monster. Gao Peng thinks if Da Zai can be promoted to elite quality it means she can be promoted to perfect quality that can break through the legendary barrier and rise to the rank of a leader. Gao Peng hugs Da Zai and promises to make her promoted to elite quality, which made Da Zai confused. Gao Peng clicked the quality requirements and saw that he need 10 pieces of Yin Shangzheng, one piece of Thunder Wood, and one piece of Thunder Crystal Core. He thinks he can get Shangzheng Grass easily by spending little money. He can get lightning wood too but lightning crystal core is troublesome, and the common 5 crystal core cost 8 credits. Gao Peng thinks it was expensive, then he closed the virtual screen. After the formation of the New World Alliance, the common currency was established as the Union Currency, and credits, then credits are premium currency based on affiliate coins, 10,000 affiliate coins can be exchanged for 1 credit point. When his mother and father had their accident, the state paid out 20 credit points of pension, and he still has 11 credits on hand, which is barely enough to get the materials for Da Zai's promotion. Gao Peng looked at Da Zai and thinks his credits is just to upgrade Da Zai, and he won't be able to get through the rest of the days. Dazzy eats all of her food but she is still hungry and asks Gao Peng for more. Gao Peng reminds her that she was a centipede, but Da Zai interrupts his words by shouting she's hungry, which made Gao Peng said okay. 
Gao Peng gives another bowl of food to Da Zai and watched her eat it while thinking the method of promotion is empty but he doesn't have money to buy materials. Suddenly he thinks that if the information on the system is correct, then maybe he could become a monster trainer. Gao Peng thinks when the time comes, he can have as much money as he wants. Suddenly he remembers his teacher saying that tomorrow there will be a monster trainer exam, and interested students can go with their parents to see it. Gao Peng immediately opened his phone because he doesn't know when the registration period will be closed. When he opened the apps he saw that the deadline was only 3 minutes left. He immediately clicks yes to apply for the monster trainer exam. But the system was busy and he needs to wait. Fortunately, he was successful in registration and he was happy to catch up. The next day, Gao Peng knocks on the neighbor's door. The neighbor named Tang Tang opens the door and Gao Peng greets her good morning shyly. Tang Tang asks Gao Peng why he wants to see him so early. Gao Peng said he was going to take the monster trainer's exam and he asks if she can take care of Da Zai for a few days. Tang Tang happily accepts his request and Gao Peng thanks her because he's able to take his exam with peace of mind. Then he left while saying he'll treat her to dinner when he gets back. Suddenly Tang Tang look at Da Zai disgusted because Da Zai's qualifications are ordinary and she was not cute. Then she asked Da Zai how Gao Peng get involved with such an unlucky plaything like her. This made Da Zai angry, but Tang Tang petted Da Zai's head and said the old man will be furious when he find out. The two enter the room, then Tang Tang called the old man. Tang Tang said Gao Peng signed an imperial beast, an ordinary quality purple-backed yellow-clawed centipede, which made the old man angry and tell her to talk to Gao Peng. Tang Tang asks the old man how he can persuade Gao Peng when he is exactly the same as him, and on the surface, Gao Peng doesn't care about anything. But in reality, he is stubborn like an ox, and Da Zai was left by his daughter and son-in-law. Tang Tang changes the topic and asks the old man if he's done with his business. Tang Tang tells the old man that they kill all the disobedient people, and replace them with obedient ones. Tang Tang was looking at Gao Peng in the window assuring the old man to not worry because as long she was with Gao Peng he won't be in danger. Then she hung up. Meanwhile, in the company, Chairman called his secretary and ordered her to tell the lab that he only give them five months, and if they don't work for him, they don't need to exist. The chairman swing his hand to make the secretary leave, then the secretary agree and vowed. The chairman looks at his phone while saying Gao Peng within a year, everything will be solved and then he will go to meet him, and no one can hurt him. At the Chang'an City Monster Division, many people are waiting to go inside. Gao Peng says that, the monster trainers are really a hot commodity because there are a lot of people. Suddenly someone called his name. When he looked back he saw Lai Zigong calling for him. Gao Peng walked to Lai Zigong and saw that he was with her sister named Lai Hongdu and his mother named Jiang Hong. Gao Peng greeted Jiang Hong, then Lai Zigong said there are in Chang'an to take the exam with their mom, and Jiang Hong asked if he comes alone to watch the monster trainer's exam. Lai Zigong said his sister was also there to take the exam even though she did not pass the exam three times which made Lai Hong do angry, then hit him with her back. Suddenly Gao Peng said he was there to take the exam, which made everyone shocked. Jiang Hong held onto his shoulder and said young people should be ambitious and maybe he become the youngest monster trainer in Chang'an. Gao Peng shyly responded that he was not good as Jiang Hong said and that he just came to try his luck. Suddenly someone asks if Jiang Hong was talking about the youngest monster trainer in Chang'an City. Then he asks in a mocking tone when did the threshold for monster trainers become so low that any dog or cat can participate. Lai Zigong got angry but Lai Hong do stop him. The man said he thought it was ridiculous that even a kid wants to be a trainer. Suddenly Gao Peng said if he can become a trainer by talking. He must already be a senior monster trainer, which made the man angry. Then the man shouted at Gao Peng as a warning. Jiang Hong said the man named Wang Shu, the son of the Wang group. And Wang Shu failed four consecutive monster trainers exams. Suddenly the people notice that the door of the building is opening. Then a guard comes out with the man. The man named Feng Zhu, chief examiner of Chang'an Monster Trainers Division. Feng Zhu announced that the Monster Trainers exam is starting and asked everyone to take the test in an orderly manner. When everyone was inside the building, Feng Zhu welcomed them and explained that the exam is divided into two levels, the literary test and the martial arts test. Feng Zhu said that their first test is a written test, three videos will be shown on the big screen, and they will pass if they accurately describe the monsters that appear in the video. Without further ado, the examination begins. The big screen showed a dolphin swimming under the water, then showed its heads outside the water. The video ended fast, which made the examiners shock. Feng Zhu said it was the first video, and they have 20 minutes to think about their answers. Examiners were panicking because they can identify the monster in a short period of time. Feng Zhu shouts that anyone who makes any more noise will be punished as cheating and will be expelled from the examination room, which made everyone silent. Wang Shu thinks that the literary test this year is hardest than in past years, but he got the exam question in advance. Suddenly Wang Shu noticed Gao Peng smiling, and he thought Gao Peng was pretending. 
On other hand, Gao Peng was happy because he can see the monster's data, dolphin named was Storm Dolphin. The Storm Dolphin likes soothing music, sunbathing, and eating all kind of fish and shrimp. The dolphin also fears dark attribute attacks and hate cluttered sound waves. Gao Peng immediately write all he saw in his paper test. The second video was in the forest with the gorilla getting a banana in the tree, and suddenly the gorilla saw the videographer, then throw a banana at the videographer and hide behind the three. Gao Peng saw that the gorilla named Mighty Gorilla, it's like to climb trees and eat bananas, the gorilla had an impatient personality, and it easily angered, also he fears poisonous monster attacks. Gao Peng immediately writes the monster data on his paper. The last video is still in the forest with a mantis on the ground. The mantis saw the videographer and it jumped into the trees. Gao Peng saw that the mantis named Scythe Mantis, it's fighting for courage and strength. The Scythe Mantis is a carnivorous monster, it likes to eat all kinds of insects, and it fears fire and flame attacks. Gao Peng smiles because he knows he passed the test. The time was up, and Feng Zhu said that the paper will be collected. The other man collects all the paper, and he lastly collects Gao Peng papers and then said that he should wait at the building for his test result. One hour later, Feng Zhu was holding the paper while saying the result of the examination are out, and he will announce the list of qualified persons. Feng Zhu called for Zhang Hong, Wang Shu, and others. Feng Zhu said all of the examiners made some mistakes, but they passed their exam, and he wished these candidates the best of luck in their martial arts exam. Wang Shu asks Gao Peng why he didn't pass the test in a mocking tone. Gao Peng didn't say a word and he wonder if there was a mistake in the data given by the system. Suddenly Feng Zhu asks who is Gao Peng. Gao Peng immediately stand up and raised his hand. Feng Zhu said he didn't expect that the candidate who scored perfect on the test would be so young and he tell that the heroes are really young while clapping. Everyone was shocked because he perfect the exam at a young age. Gao Peng look at Wang Shu and set a perfect score on the written exam. And Gao Peng apologized for letting Wang Shu down in a sarcastic tone which made Wang Shu angry. Feng Zhu assists the past examiners to the other part of the building. When everyone enters the place, Feng Zhu welcomes them to the second exam of the martial test and explain that the marital arts test is very simple. There are monsters provided by the association in the room, and they only have to improve the quality of the monster within a week to pass. All materials consumed during the evaluation will be provided by the association but if they fail to improve the quality they have to pay the market price. Also, every material had a certain amount, and if the amount exceeded too much it was considered a failure which made Gao Peng and others worried. Feng Zhu claps his hand, then the supervisor of Chang'an's monsters division named Lai Jin showed holding a red box, and asks everyone to take a card for their room one by one. Everyone lines up and then grabs cards in the box one by one. While Gao Peng was waiting in line, he thinks that there is no way to know what kind of monster he will encounter in this random selection process, and no wonder everyone said that the monster trainer's certificate is one of the most difficult certificates to obtain. On other hand, Wang Shu was looking at Gao Peng while thinking that Gao Peng should be proud of himself for a while because he'll see him later. Gao Peng was grabbing his cards wishing that he can draw a good card. When Gao Peng was done and walked past by Lai Jin, Lai Jin smiled in a mocking way. Zhang Hong walked towards Gao Peng and said she get room number 6, then asks Gao Peng what he get. Gao Peng said he got room 10. When everyone had a room card, Feng Zhu asks them to find their room according to the room card they have drawn, and he announces that the martial arts examination officially begins. Gao Peng arrived at his room and meet the person in charge of room 10 named Zhu Yuan. Zhu Yuan opened the room. Gao Peng was nervous waiting to fully open the door and saw the ape monster behind the cage. Gao Peng saw that the monster's status was negative lesions and pre-abolished. Gao Peng asked Zhu Yuan what happened to the Red River Ape. Zhu Yuan responded that too many experiments have accumulated, a lot of waste and conflicting energy in the ape's body. Zhu Yuan tell him that the ape should have been eliminated, but there are no more monsters left in the association for him to train. In reality, before the examination, Zhu Yuan asked Lai Jin why he put the ape on the assessment list, but Lai Jin just responded that he shouldn't worry about it. Because he have his own agenda, then Lai Jin called Wang Shu to confirm that his work was done, and guarantee that Gao Peng will not be able to pass the martial arts test. Zhu Yuan said that the ape has been able to survive until now solely on its own perseverance, but the possibility of it being promoted is too low, and he can help him apply and keep the result of the written exam, then he can take the martial exam next time. Gao Peng looked at the ape, then Gao Peng thanked Zhu Yuan for his kind words, but he decided to continue the exam. Zhu Yuan agreed, then left the room. Gao Peng stood in the ape front, which made the ape shake in fear. Zhu Yuan thinks the material and dosage of the culture solution are correct, but it's not effective. He also thinks that there is a serious conflict between energy in the ape body, and the Red River ape is hopeless and completely ruined. 
The ape grabs the bar of its cage, then roar at Gao Peng with tears in its eye. Suddenly Gao Peng petted the ape's head, then said don't worry because he'll definitely help him evolve. Gao Peng opened the Red River Ape promotion to elite quality. He saw that it have two promotion routes, the normal evolution and the advance of lesion distortion. He thinks that the normal way of evolution required too many materials to be consumed. Gao Peng realizes that the ape exceeded the number of materials given for the examination, and he knows that he'll have to take a risk. Gao Peng choose the advanced lesion distortion material and then write the ingredients he needs like black candle grass, undead monster crystal core, luminous powder, sulfuric acid water, skeleton mushroom, and grass knot. Gao Peng handed the paper to Zhu Yuan. Zhu Yuan read all the ingredients and realize that all ingredients are full of toxic. Then he asks Gao Peng if he's going to train the ape or kill it. Gao Peng responded that a serious disease needs a strong cure, and he assured Zhu Yuan that he knows what he's doing. Then he closed the door, leaving Zhu Yuan confused. Zhu Yuan thinks Gao Peng full marks on the written exam were just luck and he's another guy who can only talk about things on paper. Three days later, one examiner was beaten by the monsters but still wanted to take another test. The other one almost made the monster promoted. But something went wrong, and someone was going crazy because his scientific experiments were no effect. On the other hand, Gao Peng thinks that the interface solution is correct. The black candle grass healed the wounds in the ape's body, and after eating black candle grass for three days in a row, the ape's spirit and condition reached a brief peak. Gao Peng also saw that the undead monster's cores are starting to take effect. Then Gao Peng looked at the key in his hand while saying he just need to put the ape in sulfuric acid water and soak it. Zhu Yun give the key to him while warning him to be careful because the ape has been tested and tortured many times. Gao Peng thinks it's difficult for the monsters to communicate in complex ways without a blood contract, but he comes so far, and he can only choose to believe. Gao Peng tells the ape that he'll let him out, but he needs to be obedient. Then Gao Peng opens the cage, then order him to come out with open arms. The ape run towards him, which made him shocked, but the ape hug him. Gao Peng petted its heads while saying that they need to go because it was important to help him get promoted. Gao Peng stands up and opened the curtains where the sulfuric acid water was. Gao Peng ordered the ape to lie in and take a dip in the acidic water while assuring the ape that it will be transformed. The ape picks some hair in its body, then throws it into the acidic water. The hair produced smoke, which made the ape shocked in fear. The ape turned to Gao Peng and then shake its head. Gao Peng touched its head and said he can give the ape strength, but it must be courageous which made the ape thinks. The ape finally has courage, then goes into the sulfuric acid water, and when the ape is fully soaked, the smoke comes out from it, which made Gao Peng cough and alerted the smoke detector. The operator saw that the fire alarm was triggered in room 10. Then he called the security officer for help. Zhu Yun grabbed the fire extinguisher, then walked toward room 10 with the other security officer, which made the other examiners confused. On other hand, Wang Xu thinks his money was not spent in vain because Lai Jin is reliable. The security officer arrives at room 10, then Zhu Yuan kicked the door. When they were inside, they were confused because there was no fire, only smoke. Gao Peng notices them and asks Zhu Yuan what brings them into the room. Zhu Yuan point to the fire detector and tells to Gao Peng that he made a lot of noise, and that they were there to check on him. Gao Peng apologized for the scene he made, then the other security officer leave while Zhu Yuan called the operator that room 10 is clear. Feng Zhu enters the room with Lai Jin while asking what happened. Zhu Yuan whispered the current situation to Feng Zhu which made Feng Zhu shocked. On other hand, the other examiners were outside the room talking about Gao Peng being inexperienced, with Wang Shu thinking Gao Peng's experiment failed. Suddenly, the acidic water in the bathtub boil, then a skeletal hand pops up, and then the skeletal face, which made Wang Shu and the other examiners shocked in fear. The monster stands up, then gets out of the bathtub which made the ground break and made everyone in the room stun. The monster looks at Gao Peng, and Gao Peng knows that he successfully completed the evolution of the Red River Ape. The monster's new name was the Babel Bone Dead Ape, his level is 11. His quality is elite, and his attribute is undead. The monster's status was weak but excited, also its weakness is light. Gao Peng checks the ape's new body with happiness. On other hand, Lai Jin said that the Babel Bone Dead Ape was a new type of monster that has never been discovered. Feng Zhu thinks Lai Jin was correct. But the truly precious is not the monster, but the one who created the monster. Gao Peng suddenly notices Feng Zhu in the back and looks back to say that he succeeded. Suddenly the monster grabs his coat, then Gao Peng look at it. Gao Peng touched its finger and said he was done helping it to improve its quality, which made the monster sad. On the other hand, Lai Jin thinks the monsters that are promoted are usually given to the employees of the association as rewards, and he wants to get the rare monsters. Suddenly Feng Zhu said that the monster is very dependent on Gao Peng, and in that case, he'll give the monster to Gao Peng which made Lai Jin, Zhu Yuan and Gao Peng shocked. Feng Zio confirmed that he was giving the monster to Gao Peng, 
but Gao Peng still can believe it. Fun Zhu explains that the Battle Bone Dead Ape monster is not recorded, and the data on all aspects are unknown. However, it looks like the upgrade was successful, then Feng Zhu asks if he wants to take the monster. Gao Peng looked at the monster and saw that the monster can be promoted to epic. Zhu Yun holds Gao Peng's shoulder while saying that the ape really wanted to go with him and that he shouldn't leave it. Suddenly Lai Jin protests at Feng Zhu because, in the association's rule, the successfully evolved monsters are usually awarded to the association's employees, and the ape has been tested six times. Suddenly Wang Xu shouted that the monster should have been eliminated. Then Lai Jin said to have such an advantage advanced monster is certainly not something that a young age person and no experience can do. Then Wang Xu shouted that Gao Peng must have cheated. Feng Zhu asks what kind of cheating Wang Xu talking about. Lai Jin responds that the difficulty of the exam is far beyond what the junior trainer can handle. And maybe Gao Peng just happened to know some method somewhere and accidentally cured the monster, so the result may not be the true level of Gao Peng. Feng Zhu asks what he means in his words. Lai Jin responded that the result is successful, and the certificate that should be combined is still given to Gao Peng, but the monster should still follow the usual rule. Suddenly Feng Zhu laughed hard, then said he's not strict in discipline, and there are not many monsters in Chang'an, so he doesn't know how to raise the monster, then he asks Gao Peng to show his skills, to let them know that there is a world beyond. Gao Peng said he just came to get the certificate, then he asks how did he get into trouble. Gao Peng looked at Wang Shu while saying he was young, so he must cheat it on tests. Then he looked at Lai Jin and said Lai Jin can't do it, but he can do it, so he's just blind. Gao Peng asks them if others can do it, they think it's impossible, so there must be something fishy. Gao Peng explained that the name of the Red River Ape has a river on it. It's just because the ape group lives and multiplies by the Hongshui River, in fact, the ape attributes have nothing to do with water because there is a river in the monster's name. And judging by the ape's previous state, there is more than one idiot who made such a judgment and gives the ape a large amount of water and yin materials to swallow. Also, the past examiners didn't know the weakness of the ape is the yin system, and if they didn't know common sense knowledge, they lived their age in vain. Suddenly Wang Xu shout that the weakness of the ape is the wood system and Gao Peng was wrong. Then Feng Zhu said although the ape will have a fearful response to the wood system, its weakness is indeed the yin system, which made Wang Xu silence. Gao Peng explained that the strength of the Red River ape's body goes deep into the bone marrow, and it's hard to clear it, so he did the opposite. The first three days Gao Peng gives the ape a black candlegrass to strengthen its soul, then supplemented by a large amount of undead materials. Gao Peng said that there is nothing he need to hide, but he advised them not to try it casually because what really matters is the order in which the materials are added and the ratio between them. And if they don't know, they shouldn't just toss it around, because he's not sure what the tested monster will become. Suddenly Feng Zhu claps while saying the new generation is fearful, and Gao Peng ability was wrong for the junior trainer certificate, and he will grant him an intermediate monster trainer certificate. Feng Zhu grabs Gao Peng's shoulder and said that the intermediate certificate is beyond his authority, and that he must go to the Yanjing headquarters to accept the assessment. But with his qualification, he'll get it. Then Feng Zhu looked at Lai Jin and Wang Xu, then asks who was cheating and he asks them how they think he become the chairman of the board that he can't find out the truth. Also Feng Zhu asks who just said that the ape was a test piece that was supposed to be eliminated is in the test examination room which made Wang Shu and Lai Jin shocked in fear. The other examiners confirmed that they always felt that Wang Shu's speech is weird and Lai Jin was always targeting Gao Peng. Then Zhu Yuan raised his hand and said he can testify. Zhu Yuan said that Lai Jin is the one who deliberately added the ape to the assessment list. And then Zhu Yuan pointed to Wang Shu and said Lai Jin did it because he took bribe from Wang Xu. Also he said that the evidence is in the monster's mobilization record. Wang Xu fell to the floor because he knows it was over for him. Feng Zhu announced that Wang Xu has severely cheated and was exempt from reference qualification, and will not be allowed in the examination of the Chang'an Monster Trainer Association for the next three years. Feng Zhu also expelled Lai Jin from the Chang'an Monsters Trainers Teachers Association, and will never be hired. Wang Xu and Lai Jin were being thrown by a guard while the examiners said they deserve it. Feng Zhu faces Gao Peng and asks him if he wants to sit in his office and have a cup of tea. Feng Zhu also said that he has a little favor for Gao Peng. At Feng Zhu office, Feng Zhu said he would like to invite Gao Peng to represent Chang'an City in the World Monster Trainers competition. And he also said that the number and quality of trainers in Chang'an City are not very optimistic, which is why he never had a good result in major monster trainers competition for several years. Feng Zhu asks Gao Peng if he's willing to represent Chang'an City because the World Monster Trainers competition doesn't have a strict age limit, whether it is the elderly, middle-aged, or young people. 
Feng Zhu also said that in terms of growth potential, young talent like Gao Peng must have an advantage. Suddenly Gao Peng laughed in nervousness, which made Feng Zhu thinks Gao Peng is not interested. Feng Zhu said it was a pity because the top players can get the prize, and the top 10 can get at least 10,000 credits. Suddenly Gao Peng stands up which made Feng Zhu shocked. When Gao Peng heard about the prize he agreed to the competition. At the bus stop, Gao Peng was happy to get the intermediate certificate, and he heard that 30 points of the points he got in his monster trainer exam will be added to the college entrance exam. He also named the Skull Ghoul Ape Dummy because it liked to daze when it was alone. The bus arrives, then Gao Peng enters the bus while thinking that the monster trainer exam was great because he get an elite quality monster and made a great profit. Also Gao Peng gets the identity token. Gao Peng and Dummy were on the bus while Gao Peng wondered if they're really going to the competition because it sounds very annoying. On the other hand, people in the back of them whisper about Dummy appearance. Then one passenger tried to touch Dummy, but Dummy attacked the passenger, but Gao Peng didn't notice it. The monsters faced the passenger and tried to pierce the passenger's eye. Suddenly Gao Peng called Dummy, then Dummy ungrabbed the passenger and faced Gao Peng. Gao Peng said in order to support Dummy and Da Zai he needs to go to the competition. Gao Peng jokingly said that he is handsome and genius at a young age and that heaven will be jealous. On the other hand, the passengers think Gao Peng hasn't signed a contract with a monster, yet he could make the fierce monster obedient. Gao Peng and Dummy get down on the bus, while they were walking Dummy notices something. Then he pushed Gao Peng to the side, then Dummy changes to his combat form and blocks the way where Gao Peng was, while looking at something. Gao Peng stands up and asks Dummy why he pushed him. Gao Peng look at where Dummy is looking, and realize Dummy was protecting him. Gao Peng assured Dummy not to worry because they will be family. Then Gao Peng introduces Da Zai to Dummy, but Gao Peng was stopped when he saw Da Zai's appearance. Suddenly Tang Tang appeared and said she and Da Zai are there to pick him up. Gao Peng asks Tang Tang what happened to Da Zai. Tang Tang responded that she give Da Zai a lot of good food, and Da Zai is very healthy and strong. But Gao Peng sees Da Zai's data and she was extremely overnourished. Tang Tang said Dazi was too skinny before because Gao Peng wasn't careful enough. On the other hand, Dummy looks at Da Zai, then looked away with attitude. Tang Tang changes the topic and asks him how his exam was. Gao Peng shyly says that he encountered a monster that failed to level up six times, but he upgraded him and got an intermediate monster trainer certificate, and the president of the trainers association gives him the monster that has been successfully leveled up, which made Tang Tang shocked and asks if you really get the intermediate monster trainers certificate. Gao Peng showed his certificate while saying as fake as it is, he actually get the certificate. Suddenly Tang Tang come close to Gao Peng and said his growth rate really surprised her, and she need to talk about something to him, which made Gao Peng confused. Tang Tang asks Gao Peng if he knows why the monster trainer has such a high status. It is because the monsters they use, no matter how strong they are, the monster is still monstrous. The Imperial monster's secret technique is clearly damage transfer, which can transfer all the damage they receive to their own monster. Although the range is limited, and can only be turned on by the subjective choice of the monster, and defensive power of the monster is far from the human. Also, when the monster upgrades, it gains more vitality and defense, and it will be more beneficial to Gao Peng. After learning, Gao Peng feel that Da Zai and him were connected by an invisible thread. Gao Peng thinks his contract is done. Then Gao Peng look at Dazi. Gao Peng tells Da Zai that she was fat and looks like a fat purple pig. But Da Zai is still talking back to him. Gao Peng orders Dummy to bring the mirror to him, then he places it in front of Dazi, which made Da Zai shocked. Da Zai plays dead, but Gao Peng said she needs to exercise in a few days to lose body fat, and after her reduction, Gao Peng will give her a quality upgrade. Then Gao Peng imagined Da Zai flying in the sky fat which made him disgusted. Two days passed, in Chang'an city center. Tang Tang was calling for Gao Peng in the street, then Tang Tang said she was happier because Gao Peng was already an intermediate monster trainer, and willing to help her with her little company. Tang Tang said she's come out to pick him up, and before they go inside she need to say that she partnered with other people to open her small monster training institution. Also she invested a lot of money in it, but her partners run away with the money some time ago, and the trainers were taken away from the store. Gao Peng said the location of Tang Tang business is good because it was the busiest part of downtown, and the rent is not cheap, which made Tang Tang shocked. Tang Tang responded with an uncomfortable expression that her business was doing good before, so she rented the place. But ever since the trainers were taken away, the business has gone downhill. 
Gao Peng feels that Tang Tang is strange. Suddenly Tang Tang turns around and asks him to go upstairs first. While they were in the front of the elevator, Tang Tang explained that the studio is on the third floor, and as for the treatment, the salary is at the highest rate in the industry, and he will be given 20% of the shares. Tang Tang pushed the third button in the elevator assuring Gao Peng that he won't be delayed in his studies and that he just need to drop by on weekends because the job of a monster trainer is very easy. They enter the elevator and then Gao Peng asks Tang Tang why she can't recruit trainers in the market when the salary is too high. Tang Tang just responded that not having monster trainers is a trivial matter but they can't smash the sign. Gao Peng thinks Tang Tang's offer was a trap, but it was Tang Tang, and for the past three years, he's not been an orphan because of Tang Tang's care. Gao Peng set aside his bad feeling and trusted Tang Tang, then he said he'll listen to Tang Tang. Tang Tang wished for their happy cooperation, but Tang Tang felt intense because she thought Gao Peng found something wrong with her action. They arrive on the third floor, then someone welcomes them there. Tang Tang introduced Gao Peng to their receptionist named Zun Quanquan. Then Tang Tang opens the elevator door and goes inside. Tang Tang tells Gao Peng that she already explained everything to Quanquan, and Quanquan will show him the environment and introduce him to his colleague. Then Tang Tang left, leaving Gao Peng and Quanquan confused. Gao Peng thinks everything happening had many flaws. Suddenly Quanquan said they get started with registration information, and Gao Peng agreed. When they enter the room, Quanquan thinks Gao Peng was too young, while she enters Gao Peng information on the desk. Also, she thinks her boss Tang Tang got cheated again. On the other hand, Gao Peng was on the sofa, drinking some tea, and thinks a plan on how he will earn enough money for Tang Tang. He needs to set the charging standard. Unlike the other trainers, they need to follow his instruction and they will have almost 100% success rate in advancing to the next level, in that case, the fee will increase. Although Gao Peng doesn't love money, he shouldn't receive less because it was a desecration of knowledge, and also, disrespectful to Goldfinger. So his plan is he'll take a loss, multiply it by three at the current highest price for an intermediate monster trainer. Suddenly Quan Quan interrupt his thought and said his information has been recorded. Quanquan asks him if he really wants to set the fee standard three times the maximum fee for an intermediate monster trainer. Quanquan also said, It's not a big deal if he doesn't follow the rules and he doesn't get clients, but it's not a trivial matter if it affects the reputation of the studio. Gao Peng asks Quanquan what her intention to say. Suddenly someone barges in and said Quanquan means Gao Peng has to prove that he really has the ability which made Quanquan shocked and called the man named Mr. Ma. Then Mr. Ma walked toward him while asking if he really want three times the maximum charge. Then Mr. Ma pointed a finger at Gao Peng and said as long as he can cure his monster, it doesn't matter how much it is, he'll give him ten times as much as he can. Gao Peng said it was not necessary. Gao Peng first order to Mr. Ma is even if it's a big bonus, he just needs to triple it. Mr. Ma asks Gao Peng if he can cure his beast for sure, Gao Peng said he doesn't need to rush, and that he needs to see where his beast is before he can give him an accurate answer. Mr. Ma said he'll believe in Gao Peng once, then he showed his injured pet. Gao Peng walked close and saw the data of the monster. The name of the monster is a purple lightning rat, its level is 13, and its quality is elite. Purple lightning rat status was light injury and suffering and its weakness is the ground system. Suddenly Gao Peng noticed that the rat was critical and he need to deal with its dangerous mutation as soon as possible. Gao Peng asks Mr. Ma in a shouting way what he feeds to the rat to make it critical. Mr. Ma said he gave the rat a blood jade mushroom because he wanted his beast to mutate and evolve. Then he begs Gao Peng to cure his pet. Gao Peng knows that the purple mouse is already in the process of evolution. But it is only because of the conflict between the power of the blood system and the lightning system that led the rat to critical condition. Gao Peng saw the mutant evolution ingredients and realizes that he need to use the system's plan to turn conflict into complementarity then the rat will be able to complete its evolution. Gao Peng ordered Quan Quan to get five shadow fruits, one red maple heart, a pair of thunder gold leaves, and one blood bat monster crystal core, then he explained to Mr. Ma. The rules for trainers, that they will come up with a plan, and they will help him with the materials, but he'll need to pay for it himself, Mr. Ma responded no problem. Gao Peng assured the rat that he will make him evolve. Gao Peng and the others proceed to the treatment room. Mr. Ma asks Gao Peng if it was really the best way to upgrade his pet with fear in his voice. Gao Peng was holding the rat with a knife in his other hand, while asking Mr. Ma if he have a problem. Suddenly Gao Peng dropped the rat into the boiling soup pot, which made Mr. Ma shocked. When the rat was inside the pot, Gao Peng stirred the soup with the rat in it, which made the rat dizzy. Gao Peng scoops soup into the pot and asks Mr. Ma if he wants to take a sip of rat soup. Then Gao Peng opens the pot lid and said he was joking, then asks Mr. Ma to take a look. Mr. Ma looked at the pot in shock to see that his pet was relaxing in the pot. 
Gao Peng explains he didn't make soup, he made a medicinal bath for his beast, and the heating only enhances the absorption of the medicine. Then Gao Peng closed the pot lid again and said he need to cook the rat twice and bore it for another 10 minutes. Mr. Ma knows there are only two senior monster trainers in the entire city of Chang'an, and they have very high status so he can't get an appointment, and the only choice he has is to give Gao Peng a try. Ten minutes later, Mr. Ma asks Gao Peng if his pet is ready because it taking a little too long to cook. Gao Peng responded that it's almost time. Suddenly the pot lid moved, and Gao Peng said it was time. Then the pot lid burst open, showing a shaky rat inside. Suddenly the rat opened its eyes and then jumped out into the pot, and another part of the room which made the treatment room destroyed. Mr. Ma saw that his pet upgrade was succeeded. The new monster's name is Purple Lightning Blood Rat, it's level 20 and its quality is perfect. Also, its attributes are the lightning system and the blood system. Gao Peng said Mr. Ma made a fortune because his pet was a perfect quality double system, and with a little bit of training, he can be promoted to the leader level beast. Mr. Ma apologizes to Gao Peng for his previous rudeness because he didn't expect that his beast can be advanced, and he thanks him. Gao Peng hand the bills to Mr. Ma and said he shouldn't thanks him because he's paying him for his service, and he needs to pay the damage to his office plus the consultation fee. Gao Peng gives the paper to Quan Quan and he asks her to follow the list of materials in the paper, then send it to his house, and the cost will be deducted from his commission. Mr. Ma asks Gao Peng if he can make an appointment for him tomorrow because he wants Gao Peng to take a look at his other beast, which made Gao Peng think. Suddenly Mr. Ma said the money is not a problem, he can pay triple or more. But Gao Peng said it's not about the money, he needs to go to class tomorrow that's why he doesn't have time. Mr. Ma was confused and asks if he was going to an association training class or to the master's class. Gao Peng grabs his coat while asking what Mr. Ma talking about, and then he said he was in third year high school, and he needs to go home to do his homework then Gao Peng left. Leaving Mr. Ma and Quan Quan shocked, Quan Quan also said Tang Tang just bought the studio a few days ago at a high price and dismissed all the monster trainers, and asked her to keep it secret to deceive Gao Peng. Meanwhile, in the apartment, Tang Tang was with her pet looking at the crystal core in her hand, and she thinks it was a good quality crystal core. Tang Tang asks her pet to send the crystal core to Gao Peng room. Tang Tang pet climbed to Gao Peng window room where Da Zai was, then throw the crystal core in front of Da Zai, which made Da Zai and Dummy look at the crystal core confused. Suddenly Da Zai eats the crystal core, then chewed it. Da Zai feels weird, then suddenly Da Zai's body acts up which made Dummy concerned. On the other hand, Gao Peng was excitedly walking while thinking that the 15 pounds of cedar pine needles are enough for Dummy to eat for a month, and he need to make Dummy evolve to its perfect quality. Gao Peng also thinks Da Zai's side can't be more urgent to upgrade because Da Zai needs a level 10 or higher lightning monster crystal core, and even if he finds one he can't afford it. Suddenly he heard a noise coming into his apartment and realized it was dummy. Gao Peng throws all the ingredients he buys and then runs towards his apartment. Gao Peng ran to the stairs and when he arrives at his apartment door, he opened his door forcefully and then he saw Da Zai rolling back and forth to the ground with a bubbling mouth. Gao Peng opened Da Zai's data and see that Dazi took a large amount of blood and flesh from the lighting badger centipede with the monster's crystal core because of that Da Zai is in the process of evolution, which made Gao Peng shocked in confusion. Gao Peng looked at Da Zai wondering how can she eat something so expensive and he was wondering who would give it to her. Then Gao Peng notices Tang Tang outside his door peeping. Tang Tang showed herself, then Gao Peng asks if she is the one who give the crystal core to Da Zai. When Tang Tang didn't answer, Gao Peng asks why did she do it. Tang Tang thinks if she said it in advance Gao Peng wouldn't want it. Then Tang Tang just said she was there to deliver something. Tang Tang put down the ingredients Gao Peng threw outside while saying Gao Peng is sloppy because he left his stuff halfway down the road. Then Tang Tang immediately run to her front door and said Gao Peng is so spendthrift after only a few days of earning money, then Tang Tang go inside her apartment, not making Gao Peng talk to her. Gao Peng looks at Dizzy Da Zai and scolds Da Zai for being an eater, and she shouldn't eat whatever she sees in the future. Gao Peng thinks Da Zai doesn't care about the situation, and he needs to make a way to complete Da Zai's upgrade quickly. Gao Peng tried to find something to his items, and throw everything that won't work. Then he finally finds the medium-grade purple poison flower that will help Da Zai evolve. He just needs to grind it and make it into juice. Gao Peng grinds the flower, then made Da Zai drink it. When Da Zai drinks it, Da Zai's eyes open wide, and her body produces a light, which made the room window break. 
Da Zai's horn and body become bigger and sharper which made Gao Peng shocked. Gao Peng checked Da Zai's data and saw that Da Zai's monster name changed to a purple-backed lightning centipede. Her level increased by 9, and her quality changed to epic. Da Zai's attributes are the lightning system and the blue system and she was ready to promote to the perfect quality. Gao Peng was happy because Da Zai's evolution was over and he didn't think it would be so easy for Da Zai to become an epic quality. Suddenly Da Zai collapsed on the ground leaving Gao Peng and Dummy confused. Dummy comes close to Da Zai worried, but Gao Peng assured him that Da Zai just lost strength. Gao Peng extends his hand with a bowl of food to Dummy while saying he specially bought his food for him and compared to Dummy appearance he's too kind. Dummy gets the food confused, but he still eats it, which made him more confused because of the food's taste. Gao Peng praised Dummy and said he need to keep eating, while Gao Peng cleaned the mess. Gao Peng tells Dummy that he completed the upgrade, and it's better to stabilize it. He will upgrade Dummy after he finds the most suitable material, and Dummy will definitely become a very powerful beast. A few hours passed, finally Da Zai regained her strength and woke up. But she saw Dummy and Gao Peng sleeping on the sofa. Da Zai thinks of a better idea, then she gets a blanket, and walks toward Gao Peng. Da Zai put the blanket on Gao Peng, then she hugged Gao Peng, which made Gao Peng uncomfortable. On the other hand, Tang Tang was looking at them in the window mirror while wondering if it was the calmness before the storm, and wishing Gao Peng will grow up as soon as possible. The following day, at the principal's office, the principal was shouting at Mr. Ma because he disagreed with letting the monster into the school. The principal angrily said that the students in the school are still children and not professionally trained. Mr. Ma calmly responded that in times of peace, the age of the student was still considered a child, but in ancient times, people of the same age as students already took weapons to defend the country. The principals understand what Mr. Ma words and ask in a worried tone if the current situation of the world got worse. Mr. Ma said the new technologies are being researched all over the world, but the speed is still too slow. Mr. Ma explained that if the technologies are still slow, and when the day comes when their technology is no longer a threat to the monsters, it'll be too late for the world. Meanwhile, in the classroom, Gao Peng feels uncomfortable because his classmates are looking at him. Suddenly one of his classmates asks him if he really gets the Intermediate Monster Trainer Certificate. Then Gao Peng asks his classmate back how did he know about his certificate. His classmate shows the Chang'an Daily newspaper to him excitedly. Then all his classmates congratulates him, which made him shy. Suddenly one of Gao Peng's classmates asks if he can make a small request. But Gao Peng stops him. Then Gao Peng said his request was small, so it was not going to be difficult for him alone. But for both of them, it was not a good deal. Which made his classmate angry, but their room teacher was behind Gao Peng's classmates back. Then their teacher named Miss Murong hit his classmate's head with a piece of paper, which made everyone run back to their sits. Miss Murong made the student silent and said she had an announcement. Miss Murong announced that all schools around the world are urgently reformed. The second year high school will have a new course on beasts, and a new special recruitment channel was added. It was a joint project of the Union Ministry of Education and the Union Military. Also, the best student can be recruited directly by the top academies or military academies. Miss Murong also said that the military coaches will be in the school soon, and students who are interested in joining the academies will begin training in the afternoon. And if they want to be special students, they need to come to Miss Murong as soon as possible after class to sign up. The class was panicking because of the sudden changes. Suddenly Miss Muron called for Gao Peng and asked him to come out for a moment because Miss Muron wanted to talk to him. Outside the classroom, Miss Muron said the principal praised him by name in the meeting because he got the intermediate monster trainer's certificate straight away. And tomorrow, the student of the seventh high school are coming, and the school like him to represent their school as a freshman. Gao Peng interrupted Miss Muron's words and said that formal speech doesn't suit him. But the fact is he likes to apply for the special student of the Imperial Ambassador. Miss Murong asks why he suddenly has an intention for the Imperial Ambassador position. Miss Murong thinks the Imperial Ambassador is a pretty good way to go, but it doesn't make much sense for Gao Peng. Miss Murong look at the window said Gao Peng grades are very good, and the bonus of an intermediate monster trainer's certificate will get him to get a lot of credits. He can try all the top academies in China and foreign academies well. While Miss Murong looking at the man getting the monster ready for the afternoon, Miss Murong said that if Gao Peng really wants to become an imperial ambassador he can also use cultural achievement to enter the military academy and then apply for related majors, Miss Murong warned him to shouldn't rush. Gao Peng thanked Miss Murong for being considerate to him and said Miss Murong was right and it was safer to enter the military academy before becoming an imperial ambassador. But it was too slow for Gao Peng because he want to learn more from actual combat training and grow stronger quickly. Also Gao Peng assured Miss Murong to take both exams because he won't give up either opportunity. Miss Murong just smiles at him and turns around. Then said since Gao Peng has his own ideas, she won't stop him. 
but she hopes he can think it over. In the afternoon, the group of students was ready to meet their opponent. Suddenly Gao Peng classmate named Tan Kaianjin shouted in the crowd asking if Gao Peng signed up to be an Imperial Ambassador student too. Then Kaianjin walks past the crowd toward Gao Peng. Then he asks him if he was a monster trainer that has a good result. Gao Peng responded that his grade are also good and asks Kaianjin why did he sign up too. Kaianjin said it's all about his childhood dream he used to watch, and the monster in the film was very cool. Also, Kaianjin said he wanted to be the strongest ambassador. Gao Peng just leave him and said he should keep up, the field is just ahead. In the school court, the student who signed up for the military academy was waiting. In the court stage, the woman called for the colonel. Kaianjin said their instructor is not that special except for being strong. Suddenly the colonel looks in their direction, which made Kaianjin shocked, and Gao Peng think that the colonel has a murderous aura. The colonel first said that the student who comes have balls compared to the people who are afraid, but they shouldn't think they become imperial ambassador, without a firm mind and without a will of steel. The colonel said they will be pissing their pants the moment they see a real monster in the wild, and their legs will be as soft as noodles, they won't be able to run away, which made everyone afraid. The colonel asks if they don't like it and he shows the monster. The colonel gets the monster and commands his lieutenant colonel to provide the armor plate. Then Lieutenant Collins report to the colonel that the target is 10 centimeters thick, and three type armor plate has been set up. The colonel orders the monster to go ahead, then the monster runs toward the armor plate and destroyed it. The armor plate was destroyed in just one attack, which made the students shocked in fear. Gao Peng wondered how the thick armor plate was destroyed in one attack. Then the colonel said that it was the killing power of a trained beast, and the monsters they will face in the future will have the same, or even greater power to kill. The colonel gives one last chance to the student who wants to quit and orders them to step out quickly. Gao Peng saw that many students wanted to quit, suddenly the colonel asks the student who want to leave, why their heads is down. The colonel said they didn't do anything wrong, and they should study hard because it was a good way out too. Also the colonel said they're not deserters, they just made a rational choice to go back to class. Then the colonel looked at the student who had chosen to stay and said they are different because from now on if anyone gives up, he's a real loser, and the colonel doesn't want any loser. After school is done, Gao Peng goes home tired, although he's mentally prepared. He didn't expect the situation to be a little more serious than he thought. Suddenly Da Zai said she was hungry while Dummy was sulking in the corner. Gao Peng stands up to walk toward the refrigerator while thinking about the words that Colonel Chen said in one month. All institutes in the city will have to eliminate 1,200 students from enrollment and Gao Peng opens the refrigerator while thinking the elimination rate is too high. When Gao Peng opens up the drawer of the refrigerator the cedar pine needles are gone. Gao Peng looks around at the refrigerator wondering where his piles of cedar pine needles are, and Gao Peng finds just one cedar pine needle. Gao Peng barge out into the kitchen angry, asking where the other cedar pine needles are, then Da Zai points to Dummy and said Dummy eat it all. Gao Peng called Dummy and he walked towards sulking Dummy. Gao Peng touches Dummy back, and tell to Dummy that next time if he wants to eat more, he needs to tell him. Gao Peng assured Dummy that he didn't say Dummy was wrong, but Dummy was still sulking in guilt. Gao Peng sits on the sofa and checks Dummy's property box. He saw that Dummy needs to absorb 600 pounds of cedar pine needles and Dummy's first stage is almost complete. Gao Peng ordered 30 pounds of cedar pine needles and 10 pounds of lightning flower fruit. One caddy of cedar pine needles is 1,000 union currency, and it is only 1.5 credits to eat 15 katas a day, which he can still afford. Gao Peng thinks it's good for dummy that he can able to eat, and more beneficial substances are absorbed, and they can move faster to the next evolution. Dummy is still an elite rank monster, and when it's at a higher rank, the material dummy needs to consume will be more precious, and some materials are even priceless that can only be obtainable by burning money. Then Gao Peng look at Da Zai and thinks Da Zai needs to take 200 pounds of lightning flower fruit to advance to perfect quality. The thunder flower fruit is cheaper than the cedar pine needles, and he can buy a pound of them for a hundred union coins. Then Gao Peng realizes that it's not easy to raise a family. Gao Peng decided to go to the monster park but he was shocked to see that the owners and monsters were in chaos, but Gao Peng noticed the exaggerated pig with the girl. Gao Peng approached the girl and asks if it was her monster and if she can give him a little space because her beast is blocking the gate, which made the girl embarrassed. The girl sadly remembers her beast before and said in sad tone that when he bought her monster it was not this big. Suddenly the coach asks what happened. Then the other people said the beast blocking the way. The coach called his beast Silver and said to Silver that the pig was all him. Then Silver changed its expression like it going to attack the pig. The pig saw Silver expression, then the pig stand up in fear which made its owner shocked. 
The coach said the show was over and if they were done, they should start the training right away. The owners and their beasts were lined up and listening to coach words. The coach said she knows some of them want to sign more beasts in the future, so she will first train them to command their beasts. It was a very basic and very important part. The coach said even if their beast is strong, it won't listen to the command that is also equal to zero and she believes they have just seen the opposite of the lesson. Then the people look at the girl with her big beast. The coach patted her beast and said if they want to train their beast, they must understand their habits and preference in order to establish a good relationship with their beast in a targeted way. The coach's example is her silver moon wolf. She bought its favorite black clad pork and fed it to her beast personally. Also, she played and slept with her beast every day which is why her beast's reliance on her has improved a lot and it is willing to obey her command. The coach said that the colonel's beast they had seen before smashed the armor plate with its tail, but in fact, the tail is not the silver moon wolf's natural strong point it was just the colonel train his beast many months that the beast's tail gradually becomes harder and swing faster, which made the people shocked. The coach said that the wolf had additional means of attack besides its teeth and claw, and the colonel's training method, developing the beast's attack diversity and enhancing the beast's advantages. Then the coach asks Old Lai to show the silver wolf skills. Old Lai was playing with the stone in his hand while saying that the silver moon wolf beside him was the same. But different training methods are used for different battles, and there are different directions of development. Then Old Lai throw the rock, then the wolf run equally to the flying rock, then the wolf destroyed it which made Gao Peng and Dao Zai shocked. The coach said the current classification of the beast has five categories, attack, defense, support, healing, and field control. The actual fact is that there are a lot of people who can do multiple categories. Then coach gives an example, the green devil vine, which can act as both a defensive and a control type. But the most important thing is that they have to be able to use it as an attacker. The coach said he had already given them a demonstration and their official training will start. She also suggests they start with simple materials, such as training bite force to choose a wood first, and then gradually increase the hardness. The coach pointed to the apes who were moving the big box of materials and assured them to don't worry about the material because they shipped a large number of training materials. The coach asked the people who had chosen a training route to register and receive their training materials. Gao Peng looked at Da Zai, wondering what else Da Zai needs to strengthen. Then he remembered that Da Zai learned the secret art of damage transfer and Da Zai needed to improve her defense first. Then Gao Peng remember the small ape who can move such a big box, and he was amazed. Suddenly Gao Peng remember seeing in the studio's archives a kind of mutant ape monster with sparse hair, called the Fierce Fist Ape. Fierce nature is very warlike, but the defense is very low, so the fierce ape from birth will be trained by their parents. Gao Peng thinks it's crazy how the fierce ape uses their own body to hit the trunk of the tree. They first hit the tree, and then hit the rocks, mountain walls, and so on, over time. The fierce ape repeatedly injured and healed skin becomes tougher and tougher. When the fierce ape becomes an adult, there are not only thick muscles, but also calluses and scars gathered together to form something to armor. And at that time the fierce adult will not suffer the slightest injury, even if they hit the mountain wall. Gao Peng thinks he can follow the fierce ape training method to train the defense of Da Zai, then he chose the training materials in the box. Gao Peng called Da Zai who was relaxing under the tree. Gao Peng walked toward Da Zai while hiding something behind his back. Then Gao Peng said he has already chosen a training method for Da Zai, and he said it's better for Da Zai to have pain now than for the rest of Da Zai's life. Gao Peng slowly shows the item behind his back while saying that it can be a little bit of suffering, and Da Zai should swear now in order to not bleed later. Then he showed the big metal hammer he get for Da Zai while saying he'll be gentle, which made Da Zai shocked. Then Da Zai runs in fear. Gao Peng runs after Da Zai with a big metal hammer while shouting for Da Zai to stop because it's for her own good, and Da Zai must understand his pain. Gao Peng finally caught up with Da Zai while enduring the pain in his arm for holding the harmer for so long. One week later, Gao Peng was in his bed. When his alarm tried to wake him up, Gao Peng just turned off his alarm, then tried to sleep again because he don't have training today. Suddenly he heard Da Zai knocking on something which made him fully awake. Gao Peng come out to his bedroom and Da Zai said she was hungry. Gao Peng start cooking while complaining about why his suffering when Da Zai is the one who upgrading. Then he looked at Da Zai and dummy. Then he realizes that Da Zai didn't eat for nothing during the period of extra meals because Da Zai grow bigger and successfully reach the 10th level. But Gao Peng is not sure if he was going to be able to get a good deal on Da Zai and his arms are almost broken in Da Zai's defense training. And Dummy also almost ate up his salary. Suddenly Gao Peng's cell phone ring and Dummy notice it, and grab the phone, then answer the call. 
The man who calls introduces his name as Liu Senlin, the general manager of Blue Shield Security Company. Gao Peng asks what Mr. Liu needs from him. Mr. Liu said he would like to talk about something with him that would be great benefit to him, and he asks Gao Peng if he has time to talk in person. At Fei Peng's studio, Gao Peng was welcomed by Quan Quan, and Quan Quan said his visitor is already waiting for him. Gao Peng meet Mr. Liu in his office, then Mr. Liu reached his hand out while introducing himself again. Gao Peng shakes Mr. Liu's hand and asks him to sit down. Gao Peng asks Mr. Liu why he was looking for him because there are senior trainers in Chang'an City, and he's not the only intermediate monster trainer. Gao Peng also said he doesn't know what kind of reputation he has that would make the general manager of a big security company come to his door on purpose. Mr. Liu laughed and said Gao Peng was too modest. Then Mr. Liu explained that there are senior trainers in Chang'an, but one of them is the president of the Monster Trainers Association named Mr. Chen, and he doesn't have time to be a consultant for a small company like his company. Also, the other senior trainer named Mr. Gu Xianlin is the government's full-time training consultant. Mr. Liu said he prefers to believe in the young and talented Gao Peng than those mid-level trainers. Gao Peng said before they continue Mr. Liu needs to accept his demand otherwise there is no need to waste their time. Gao Peng first demand is he has classes from Monday to Friday, unless it is a very urgent situation, and they shouldn't disturb him during the weekdays. Second, it's fine for him to be a trainer consultant, but he won't sign a buyout exclusivity contract, and he can only guarantee that he won't help their competitors. Mr. Liu hand the contract to him because he agreed to Gao Peng demand, and he asks Gao Peng if the part-time contract they prepare is appropriate. Gao Peng get the contract and read it. Gao Peng realizes that the contract is not quite right because there are no mandatory requirements. The salary is annual, 500 credits per year plus commission, and 50 credits for every successful evolution of Devil Mantis from the Blue Shield. Gao Peng signed the contract while wondering if the owner of the Blue Shield company is so rich and capricious, but the contract was almost a non-binding contract. Suddenly Quan Quan knocked on the room door and enter, then said that Mr. Ma who made an appointment earlier has arrived. Mr. Liu stand up and said since Gao Peng signed the contract, he won't bother him anymore. Then they head out. Gao Peng assists Mr. Liu to the elevator, then Mr. Liu said he'll look forward to their future cooperation. Then Gao Peng left. When Mr. Liu was waiting for the elevator, he called someone to report that Gao Peng signed the contract. Then Mr. Liu asks why he choose Gao Peng when there are so many trainers in Chang'an but someone in the other line said something that Mr. Liu just agree. In other place, in the Feipeng studio, Gao Peng is checking on Mr. Ma Beast. Gao Peng saw that the monster's name is the Four Seasons Begonia Demon. It was level 3, and its attribute is urban. The Four Seasons Begonia Demon's status is health pleasure, and its weakness is fire and lightning. Gao Peng asks Mr. Ma in an angry tone if he really wants his flower demon to evolve because the flower demon was pretty, the leaves have a fuchsia pattern and serrated edges, and also it has a slight fragrance. Mr. Ma said yes because there will be a Flower King competition in Chang'an City in half a month, and he's going to use his flower demon to compete for the position of Flower King. Quan Quan said the Flower King competition is usually for girls to participate. Mr. Ma said he also knows that he's a big man to compete for the Flower King, and it will look really strange. Then the Flower Demon holds Mr. Ma finger and Mr. Ma said it was his second beast and he hopes to give his Flower Demon a good start. Then Mr. Ma begged Gao Peng to make his beast evolve so it has a better chance of taking the tournament, which made Gao Peng shocked because he didn't realize that Mr. Ma was so concerned about his beast. Gao Peng assured Mr. Ma that he will make his beast evolve. Then Gao Peng said Mr. Ma know the usual rules, three times the charge. Suddenly Quan Quan asks Mr. Ma to swipe his card to their ATM swiper to pay. Gao Peng ordered Quan Quan to prepare the 200 years old tree essence, 150 drops of flower spirit dew, one leaf of spirit flower, one money of golden bell, one caddy of fat sea, and one black wind grass, which Quan Quan agreed. After Quan Quan prepared all the ingredients, Gao Peng throw him outside the operating room and said that they shouldn't disturb him, but Mr. Ma still peeked even though Quan Quan tried to stop him. Gao Peng was holding an injection, assuring the fear flower demon that it just hurt a little. Then Gao Peng inject the injection into the flower, and the flower made a sound, which made Mr. Ma angry and tried to shout, but Quan Quan covered Mr. Ma mouth and tried to make Mr. Ma calm down. Suddenly Gao Peng said they can come in which made them shocked. Gao Peng introduces to them the Four Seasons Begonia, Level 4, and Elite. Mr. Ma and Quan Quan were happy because the flower demon becomes so much prettier after being evolved. 
Suddenly, Mr. Ma jumped to hug Gao Peng because of his happiness which made Gao Peng angry. Meanwhile, somewhere, the girl who's touching her beast asks if they fail again. The tree man said even if they pass the test, they may not be able to get into a good school. Also 12 o people only can be recruited, they can simply mix for a month, and then go back to the test after a month. The girl stands up while thinking that the three men were a bunch of stupid who thinks they're smart, and she said that no matter what other do, she must try again to find Gao Peng. In the forest, the small monsters feel the forest shaking. Then the small monster sees some mushrooms, suddenly the small monster gets attacked by the spider web, which made the monster shake in fear. The monster activates his combat form, then spin around to free itself from the spider web. But more spider webs were poured by the poor small monster. When the small monster was fully covered by a spider web, the spiders showed themselves, and there were a lot of spiders coming out into the forest. Meanwhile, in Chen Jai's material shop, Gao Peng getting his 30 pounds of cedar pine needles to old Chen. But old Chen said the cedar pine needles are out of stock and only 10 pounds were left. Gao Peng asks old Chen why cedar pine needles are out of stock when there has an estate outside the city that specializes in supplying them. Old Chen hands his tablet to Gao Peng to show that a week ago there have a group of villainous spiders emerged from nowhere, and the spiders ate all the herbs in the garden, so the area had been sealed off by the army. Old Chen also said that the spider eats other monsters in the surrounding mountain and forest, and he heard that if it weren't for the boss of the estate running fast, they could also be eaten. Old Chen's words were interrupted when someone entered the shop to buy. Old Chen asks Gao Peng if they can talk later because he has business to receive. Gao Peng realizes that first the college and the military had a sudden collaboration then the security company that came to his door, then lastly the unknown spider that appeared suddenly. Gao Peng knows that something big will happen. Suddenly Mr. Liu calls Gao Peng. Gao Peng answer the call, then Mr. Liu asks if he knows about the newly discovered brutal gray spider in the ember forest. Gao Peng immediately go to Blue Shield Security Company, where he was greeted by Mr. Liu. Mr. Liu said it was urgent, so he won't speak any courtesies and ask Gao Peng to follow him through the background information. Mr. Liu explains that due to the large number of brutal gray spiders attacking numerous resource sites, the government has brought together security companies and several private organizations to explore forests with the goal of understanding the habits and weaknesses of the brutal gray spiders. Mr. Liu said their company just received the assignment and will be leaving in three days, but but they don't have enough reserves of imperial beasts yet. So Mr. Liu would like to ask Gao Peng to take a look at the beast in advance because if they can advance a few more devil mantis before they leave they will have a better chance of success on the mission. Gao Peng said he better look at the situation of the devil mantis first. Mr. Liu said the company really takes the opportunity very seriously, and previous meetings convened by the coalition government abolished many regulations that suppressed non-official forces. Mr. Liu swiped his card to open the room while saying, the changes in monsters in recent years and that the government is increasingly overwhelmed. And Mr. Liu said the conference has opened up many policies, and is afraid the direction of the coalition is about to change. Mr. Liu asks Gao Peng to take a look, then Mr. Liu explained that all the devil mantises in the company are there, also Mr. Mr. Liu said they will arrange enough manpower to assist Gao Peng. Mr. Liu assures Gao Peng that his rewards will definitely make him feel good, as long as the results they wanted are achieved. Gao Peng said he won't let Mr. Liu down, then Gao Peng proceed to check at the devil mantises. On the other hand, Mr. Liu was upstairs looking at Gao Peng in the mirror, then his secretary asks him what is Gao Peng doing. Mr. Liu's secretary said that all he can see from the moment Gao Peng went downstairs, he just touched and looked like an old man shopping, and is a bit confused if Gao Peng really can do it. Mr. Liu tells his secretary to shut up if he doesn't know how to talk properly, which made the man shocked in fear. Mr. Liu looks at where Gao Peng was and wonders if Gao Peng can do it, but is betting his future on Gao Peng, so he can only believe that Gao Peng must be capable. On the other hand, Gao Peng said the 8th one from the left in the 1st row, the 4th one from the right in the 4th row, and the largest one in the 7th row. Then he asks to leave the 10 devil mantises he just mentioned, and he asks to prepare a laboratory, as well as a low-rank insect enhancement drug, low-rank ETH crystal core, star steel powder, and perilla leaves in 10 copies. Mr. Liu immediately order his secretary to prepare the requirements that Gao Peng said. Mr. Liu realizes that Gao Peng sees the 10th strongest devil mantises in just 10 minutes among hundreds of imperial beasts. Mr. Louis thinks Gao Peng's speed and accuracy rate was faster than the new senior, and the most frightening thing is that Gao Peng is less than 20 years old. The materials that Gao Peng requested arrived, then Gao Peng started working, and mix all the ingredients. Finally Gao Peng get the mixture of ingredients he needed. 
Suddenly Mr. Liu heard Gao Peng shouting it worked. Mr. Liu stand up and walked toward Gao Peng, and he saw the devil mantises evolved with cheering people. Mr. Liu's secretary said Mr. Liu really has a good eye because the devil mantises turned out to be a leader level 4 wing jade mantis, and it's a perfect quality evolution. Mr. Liu was looking at Gao Peng, proud that Gao Peng is really unfathomable treasure he has found. The next day, Gao Peng and Da Zai are in the monster park training how fast can Da Zai run. Gao Peng said Da Zai run 7.47 seconds, 0.4 faster than last time. Then he patted Da Zai's head and gave Da Zai his favorite dried worm. Suddenly Gao Peng noticed that the other student is just fooling around. But the coach only care about the hardworking students and don't care about the negligent students. Suddenly someone called Gao Peng name. When he turned around he saw his classmate named Mu Ting. Ting tells Gao Peng that he trained his beast very well. Gao Peng thinks if Ting is a man, she would definitely be called a strong man, then Gao Peng said thanks. Ting said she was there to team up with him, which made Gao Peng ask why him. Ting explained that in the middle and later stages of training, they will be fought in the battles, then teams will be divided, and their score will be calculated in small groups. Trying also said that the others are not competent, and she has no mutual language with others. Gao Peng asks where her beast is, Ting said wait a minute, then she whistles and called Lotus Seed her beast name. Lotus here Ting, then run towards her which made Ting shy, but Gao Peng and Da Zai were shocked. Ting introduced her beast named Lotus Seed, and she said Lotus Seed was a steel rhino. Gao Peng and Da Zai are still shocked. Suddenly Ting said before Gao Peng considers teaming up with her, she wants Gao Peng to know that her beast is very timid and that Lotus Seed will give away to the monsters dozens of times smaller than it. But Ting said that her beast is more than qualified to be on defense now because of its dulled sense of pain. Gao Peng thinks it's not impossible to team up with Ting. Even though there are many imperial beasts present 99% of them are ordinary quality, and there are only a few that can reach elite quality. Then Gao Peng looked at Lotus Seed data and saw that it was elite quality. Gao Peng thinks Da Zai going to take the attack route with the poison attribute, so a defensive route of the imperial beast is just right for them because it creates more time and space for Da Zai to attack. Also, more options in terms of tactics. Ting was worried because Gao Peng hesitated for so long, and she was sure that Gao Peng doesn't want to team up with her. Then she looks at her beast thinking that her Lotus Seed may not really fit into the Battle Royal Beast, and it was not fair for Lotus Seed too. When Ting was ready to leave, Gao Peng stopped her and said he accepted her invitation. Gao Peng said that it doesn't matter if her beast is a timid temperament because she can train it later. Also, Gao Peng thinks it's tiring to communicate with others, which made Ting happy. Ting grabs Gao Peng's hand, then she shakes it hard because of her happiness. Meanwhile, outside the Black Ember Forest Joint Operation Area gather all the invited team leaders and managers. Captain Mu said she didn't expect to see the famous manager Liu there, which made Mr. Liu laugh. Suddenly someone behind Mr. Liu said that according to the latest official information, the brutal gray spider has a clear fear response to flames. Then Mr. Liu said Captain Song's team is best at the fire element and Captain Song should take the lead in the mission. Captain Mu said he doesn't care because Mr. Liu's Devil's Mantis is called the Jungle Killer, and she's afraid that Mr. Liu is the first one to finish the job. Then Captain Mu and Mr. Liu look at each other smiling with tension. Suddenly the captain of the military said he was glad they all came and is sure that they have seen the new information yesterday. The captain explains that it's highly likely that the brutal gray spider preys on large numbers of prey and brings them back to the nest in order to provide sufficient food for their mother. And once their mother gets enough food supply, it means that there will be more terrifying spider waves. The captain said the leader's and manager's mission is very important, and they hope that they can cooperate with the military sincerely, and their priority is to complete the task, and as long as their task is completed, the reward will never be less. The leaders and managers think the military was trying to be nice to them but the military is afraid that they will fight internally. The captain of the military thinks they don't have any objections and he said they should start the task. As agreed, the military provides fire suppression first. Then the captain ordered to fire to 3 o'clock. His comrade hears him and then blows fire to 3 o'clock. The attack lunged to the spiders and made a hole in the ground with broken spider body parts. Mr. Liu complains to the captain of the military because after he talks to them nicely, he still have to show his muscles and scare them. However, Mr. Liu said the government did take the exploration very seriously, and the artillery was meant to deter them. But Mr. Liu thinks it did greatly weaken the strength of the monsters for them, and if they can show anything real in their current mission they can't justify it. Captain Mu shouts at Mr. Liu that he hasn't even done anything yet and the leader level imperial beasts, the eight of them, and several other organizations only have three or four each. Mr. Liu laughed and said that because the others still have their cards, unlike Captain Mu and him, who are too honest. Suddenly the ground something make a loud sound that made every people on the ground panic. 
The man called Mr. Liu because the state of the devil mantis is not right and the mantis seems to be very scared. Suddenly he heard a big step coming toward them, then a big gorilla showed itself. Mr. Liu looked at it and said that the aura he feels is a lord level monster aura. Then Mr. Liu realizes that it was the lord of the black ember forest. The lord of the forest screams loudly and ready itself to attack which made the people there panic. The captain of the military thinks the leader and managers are useless. Suddenly the military's killer golden beast got down from heaven which made the people think they're saved. When the lord of the forest is going to attack, the golden beast flies in front of it. Then the golden beast attacked the lord of the forest using its fire, but the lord of the forest shielded itself using his arm. The lord of the forest looks at his burning arm in shock, then turn around and leave. The military captain suggests to Mr. Liu to act quickly as their support can't go so far. The captain shouts at the people to assemble. The captain said to the man that the people with them are all a bunch of ripoffs. Also, he asks why they need the help of the people when their team in the military can take care of the situation themselves. The man said although they were one step ahead and noticed the change, they were able to take advantage of it and be prepared. But the world is changing more dramatically than they thought, and the situation is increasingly dire. The man explains that in order to prepare for the non-governmental organization should grow and participate as soon as possible. Captain Mu and her team were in the cage, killing spiders using their beast and fire. One of her team said that their plan won't work because it was too wasteful of energy. The women also said although their imperial beasts can easily kill the elite quality monsters, the number of monsters is too many and their beast energy will be depleted soon. Captain Mu orders her team to adjust their formation, and she orders her defensive imperial beast to stand in the front row to support the imperial beast that stands in the center. Suddenly his defensive imperial beast was attacked by the spider, the girl order her thorn demon flower to use its thorn armor to pass at defensive imperial beasts. Then Captain Mu asks her beast to attack, then Captain Mu beast blows out the fire to attack the spiders. After Captain Mu's beast killed the spider they were happy because their tactics working. Suddenly they hear people fighting, but they realize that they are still at some distance from the mother spider's destination. Captain Mu run and order her team to move. Finally, Captain Mu's team arrived at the mother spider's destination and saw the other teams attacking the mother spider. The team's leaders realize that the mother spider has little offensive power, and is only large enough to reproduce, but she is actually a very weak fighter. Then Mr. Liu suggests to other team leaders that they should work together to kill the mother spider, and after that, they can divide the credits according to the wounds they inflicted. Then Mr. Liu orders his support to attack the eyes of the mother spider using the back row of long range which his support immediately follow. Mr. Liu attacked the mother spider's eyes but he was shocked to see that it had a shield. On the other hand, the girl and Captain Mu's team said the situation is deadlocked, and they had to get down to help the other team. Also, if the mother spider die without their team's help, the military will deduct their contribution and other teams will also reject them. Captain Mu looked at the mother spider then said her teammate was right and they have to go down to help, but she thinks something is not right with the mother spider and she had a bad feeling. Suddenly the eye shield of the mother spider broke and Mr. Liu notices it. Then Mount Liu Mantis saw it and it jumped into the mother spider's eyes and attacked it, which made the mother spider shocked. Suddenly the spider screams loudly and the people around hear it suffer. Mr. Liu wonders who's the one who said that the mother spider doesn't have an attack power. Suddenly Mr. Liu's eyes widen because the mother spider is evolving into a lord level aura. Mr. Liu immediately rides to his mantis and makes it run while explaining that the mother spider is an evolving lord rank peak monster and apparently the evolutionary process of the mother spider was interrupted by them. Mr. Liu shouts at the people that isn't something they can solve and he orders the people to run. Meanwhile, in the forest, the captain of the military and the government were waiting for the teams to come back. Suddenly they saw someone flying in the sky coming their way. When the captain looks up and he thinks something wrong, he shouted to alert all the troops and order them to prepare for the battle. Mr. Liu who currently riding his mantis in the sky shouts to hold the fire. When Mr. Liu and his mantis landed Mr. Liu was down to the ground exhausted. Then one of the government's people run toward him to ask why he was alone. Suddenly Mr. Liu stands up and grabs the man's suit tie, while asking if their government sent them there to die because the mother spider that they said was a little offensive monster is in the process of advancing to the lord level. The captain holds Mr. Liu's hand and tells him to calm down. Also he should clarify the situation first. Mr. Liu ungrabs the man's suit tie then he explained that when they exploring the cave, they encountered a mother spider in the process of evolution. Due to the difference in strength they had to be one-sided and been massacred. Also, Mr. Liu said in order to complete the mission, 
They sent out their best beasts but all their beasts were killed inside the cave. The captain looks at the government researcher and asks them in an angry tone why they only said that the mother spider is with a little combat power, but the researcher can't say a word. Suddenly the man appeared in the distance, the captain asks the man where is the mother spider and if it follow him. The man responded that he don't know, and maybe the mother spider chasing the others because after they came out, they were all scattered and fled which made the other military personnel look at each other. The captain said if they knew in advance that the mother spider was in the process of advancing to the level of the lord, they won't just send a small amount of manpower. Also, the captain said if they can bring the mother spider back to the military zone and train it properly, it will definitely enhance the strength of their military zone. However, the mother spider failed to advance and become worthless, and the captain assured his people that they don't need to worry about the rest because one mountain can't tolerate two tigers, and the leader beast of the black ember forest will definitely not let it go. Meanwhile, in Monster Park, Dazai destroyed the stone, which made the other owner shocked. The other owner tells his beast to look at Dazai in an encouraging tone. Gao Peng was petting Dazai when he thinks Mr. Liu unexpectedly met two leader rank and one half leader rank monster, after only taking over a government task. Gao Peng knows that the hunting environment in the wild is getting more and more severe, and the value of the corpse of the common level monster is pitifully low. Then the price of an elite level monster's corpse is only enough to buy a snack for Dummy. So, Gao Peng thinks he needs to let Dummy and Dazai rise up to the leader rank as soon as possible, so that the success rate of hunting in the field is higher, and once his beast all advances, his reputation as a monster trainer would be established. If that time comes, Gao Peng plans to go to Yanjing City to get the senior monster trainer certificate, and get his one regular and one assistant, as long as he grows according to the route, he thinks he can continue to become stronger. Demi has broken through level 14, but unfortunately, no one has completed the task set by the Monster Hunters Guild, and Dummy has eaten all cedar pine needles at home, so Dummy can only stand foolishly in front of the refrigerator and stared at it every day. And after all time of training, Dazai also reached level 13. Suddenly Ting called for Gao Peng while showing her notebook, then Ting said inside her notebook she write her own summary of training tips for defensive beasts. Gao Peng took the notebook and check it while thinking since Ting choose to team up, she have to be well prepared and with her notebook, they can formulate tactics based on the characteristics of her beast. Gao Peng read on one page of Ting notebook that the will of steel is always more important than physical defense for the defensive beast. Then Gao Peng looked at Ting while thinking that Ting is really serious about their team, which made Ting confused. Gao Peng walked toward Ting, then he tiptoed to reach Ting, and tapped Ting's shoulder, then Gao Peng said he suddenly feels that Ting is quite easygoing, which made Ting more confused. Suddenly, they heard someone in the speaker ordering all students to gather in front of the stage, and there will be no free practice. When all the students gathered, the coach said their first phase of training is done, and before they start the second phase he would like to announce a list of names. The captain showed a piece of paper and started to call the names of the student written on it, and the captain said all the names he called was eliminated and they should leave the field which made the student who was called gets angry and protests. Suddenly the expression of the military trainers changes and asks if they have a problem, and said their instructors have seen how they have all been behaving in the past few weeks. The coach asks Zai Jiangyi if the phone is fun. Then he asks Hu Yanchen how can she sleep comfortably on the training field. Then the coach warned them that if they fool around and be lazy in basic training, then there is no point in continuing the training. The coach also said that the second phase of the training is a practical one, and if they continue with their kind of lax attitude, they will not only cause accidents, but they may even lose the lives of their beasts, which made the student shocked. One student said his teddy is the strongest, and absolutely can kill the monsters without leaving any behind. Suddenly someone said his teddy looks like a bluff, and he was afraid his teddy will be scared to crawl in an instant and ask him if you want to fight he still need his yellow-tailed king scorpion beast. The two men glaringly look at each other, then they shout at each other, which confused other students. Suddenly the coach said there should five people in a group, and they should get ready to start actual combat training. Also, the coach said the new group will be led by an instructor so they need to hurry up to find a group. The two classmates immediately jumped toward Gao Peng and Ting while shouting to other students to find other teams because there are teammates of Gao Peng and Ting. The other student starts to make a teammate. Suddenly the coach appeared on Gao Peng team while saying hi. Then the coach formally introduces himself as Zhang Renbai, and he said he'll be in charge of their group's practical training. Then Renbai asks Gao Peng group who wants to be the first to try. Renbai introduced the monster named Steel Pig, and it was level 9. The Steel Pig status is weakly wounded. The other teammate of Gao Peng shakingly asks Renbai if they can get a different monster. Renbai pointed to the other monster named Hairless Bloodhound and it was level 10. 
The hairless bloodhound quality is elite and its status is moderately injured and it was alerted. Dao Peng thinks the hyena looks unimpressive but it is actually an elite quality, and if his teammate gets excited and go berserk, the hyenas can be much more aggressive than the wild boars. Dao Peng walked toward Renbai and said since no one is gonna try, he'll be the first to challenge. Renbai released the wild boar out of its cage. Then the boar run towards where Gao Peng and Da Zai were. Da Zai changes to his combat form and Gao Peng ordered Da Zai to go ahead. The boar scream and attack Da Zai, but Da Zai avoided it, then Da Zai jump above the boar. Da Zai open his mouth, then bite the boar, which made the boar scream in pain. The boar jerked Da Zai off with force, then Da Zai was thrown to the ground injured, which make his teammates shocked because they think Da Zai lose. Gao Peng realizes that Da Zai is at a disadvantage, but Da Zai has already taken control of the situation because the boar is poisoned. Da Zai toxin has been injected into the steel pig along with the attack. The more violent the attack of the steel pig, the faster the toxin spreads. Suddenly the boar's feet shake, then the boar collapsed to the ground severely injured, which made his teammates and their beasts shocked. Da Zai stands up and looks at the lying boar. Renbai said the steel pig's face was blue, so it was clearly poisoned. Then Renbai congratulates Gao Peng because he passed today's training, and his centipede is very toxic and had good combat sense. However, Renbai said it's better to let Da Zai poison sparingly, otherwise it is difficult to improve Da Zai's combat power, and it will lose most of its combat power once it encounters enemies that are immune to poison. Gao Peng gives Da Zai a treat and said Da Zai did well, while Renbai thinks Gao Peng's centipede is almost raised like a dog. Renbai said the steel pig can still fight and he asked who will go next. One of Gao Peng teammates touched his beast and said his beast can participate in the second round battle. Then his other teammates said he only have the ability to beat a dog in the water. The student mocked his other classmate and said he can only beat up the falling water teddy in his house. Renbai stopped them and ordered them to continue the training. The boar stands up again, and the student orders his yellow-tailed scorpion king to attack. The scorpion attacked the boar using its tail with a poison needle repeatedly, which made the boar dead, and the student was proud of his beast. Suddenly his beast collapsed to the ground with its mouth bubbling. That made the owner shocked. Gao Peng said his beast was poisoned which made the owner more confused. Then Ting said Gao Peng words were true because Gao Peng's imperial beast and the yellow-tailed scorpion's own poison were still left in the monster's body. Then Ting said it's not the case that all the imperial beasts with poison attacks have poison resistance. The owner asks if his beast was poisoned by itself, then the other teammates of them laugh because his yellow-tailed scorpion king laughs to death, which made the owner angry. The owner of the scorpion pointed to something and said to his teammate that before he laugh at him, he should look at his beast. When the student looked around he saw his beast running towards the dead boar. The student hold his beast and tried to stop it. Then the owner of the scorpion gives his scorpion an antidote, while in the back team was asking Gao Peng a question. Renbai thinks Gao Peng team was not easy to lead. The next day, Dummy opened the refrigerator cabinet, but it was still empty, so Dummy close it hard. Then Dummy opens it again hoping that the cedar pine needle was in it. Gao Peng who's looking at Dummy thinks Dummy was so silly and cute, while behind him Da Zai was eating. Suddenly Gao Peng phone rang. When he picked it up and see it was the Monster Hunting Association number, he thinks it must be the Cedar Pine Needles. Gao Peng answered the phone. Then the voice on the other line said his task number posted in the Monster Hunting Association had been completed, and his item will arrive at the pickup location at the scheduled time. Gao Peng immediately wears his shoes because he thinks if the shortage continues, he wants to give Dummy a new evolutionary route. Gao Peng called the robot who deliver his Cedar Pine Needles item. On the other hand, there have two men in the alley looking at Gao Peng. The second brother asks his boss if Gao Peng was the one who paid a lot of money to buy cedar pine needles, to which his boss agreed. The boss told his men that in the night they were going to do a big job. The third brother asks him if they are really okay doing something bad. The boss looked at the man angrily and said that he was really useless, then his second brother punched his head, then shout at him angrily. The boss said they were not going to attack right away, they just going to check it first, and if they really can't afford to offend, they will withdraw immediately. The night comes, the three man was quietly walking around in the neighborhood. Then the second brother of their group asks their boss why the neighborhood is so shabby, and he feels it was poorer than the hellhole they live in. The boss said it was better because the kid has no background, but recently made a fortune, so it was more suitable for them. The three men finally arrive at Gao Peng apartment door and the boss is trying to unlock Gao Peng door. Suddenly someone's door opens, then Tang Tang asks them what they're doing in the middle of the night. The two men shield their boss and said the hallway is too tight, and he couldn't open their door at once. Tang Tang turns around and said okay while she was pulling her door close. Suddenly the man stops her door to close, then the man asks her if they can come in and get a glass of water because they're thirsty. Tang Tang said, of course, then she asked the men to come in. 
The boss and the second brother look at each other smiling. The boss order his second brother to say thank you while the third brother was afraid behind them. When the three man was inside Tang Tang's apartment, the boss signals his second brother to lock the door, then the second brother follow his boss and lock it. Tang Tang hear it and asks why they lock the door. The boss said they were afraid of disturbing the other neighbors at the late hour. Tang Tang said they can rest assured because she uses special soundproofing material in her walls, and even if they play bouncy, they won't disturb the next door neighbors, which made the three men shocked in fear because they saw Tang Tang expression, and behind Tang Tang was her big beast. Tang Tang walks toward the three men, suddenly the boss pulled a knife, then tries to stab Tang Tang, but Tang Tang attacks his arms, which made the man bend in pain. The other two men were shocked, then the third brother asks his beast to help their boss. The beast tried to attack, but Tang Tang beast grab it and eat it which made the two men shocked. Tang Tang patted her beast and asked why it eating randomly again. Suddenly, Tang Tang and her beast are attacked. The boss praised his bullet rat beast and mocked Tang Tang. But the boss was shocked when he saw Tang Tang was not injured. Tang Tang said she told them the answer, but they also don't understand it. Tang Tang looked at the three man and then said that was okay because she will teach them a lesson by hand. Then Tang Tang changed to something which made the three man shake in fear. The boss shouts and said grandma and admits that he was wrong. Gao Peng heard the scream from his bedroom, but he just thinks it was someone who doesn't sleep in the middle of the night. Tang Tang tied up the three man and called Old Kai. Tang Tang said she have three volunteers, so Old Kai shouldn't worry because the three man was well trained and she can guarantee that the three man will guard the border until the last moment. The morning comes, Gazai and the other monster were tired, which made their owners shocked because their beasts can't break the defense. The monster was named Mutant Water Bear Bug, it was level 12 elite, and its quality is normal. The Mutant Water Bear Bug status is healthy but lazy, and its first weakness is fire, the second is don't let it have water and get dehydrated and die, and lastly, it will die if it gets chopped. Gao Peng thinks it's time to consider the third beast of him and he wonders if he will sign for a water bear bug because Gao Peng knows water bears bugs are hardy beings that can survive in space, nuclear radiation, minus 200 degrees below zero, and microwave ovens. Also after the catastrophe, the vitality has been further improved and the water bear bug has strong resistance to abnormal attributes. However, Gao Peng knows that the water bear bug kind of beast has a strong ability to protect itself, so there is no need to cooperate with Da Zai and Dummy, and choosing a long-range attack or defense type is more suitable. But if there's a room for flying beast or healing beast is more better. Suddenly, Gao Peng noticed the noise and saw Ting cheering her beast killing the hyena while Ren Bai tried to make Ting stay away from her beast because the beast is fighting. Gao Peng thinks Lotus Seed's timid character has improved a lot under Ting's training. Then his phone in his pocket rang. Gao Peng answered the call and Mr. Liu asked him if he have free time today. Gao Peng asks what is it. Then Mr. Liu said he'd like to invite him to dinner, and he have some friend coming over, so he'd like him to introduce him to them. Gao Peng thinks Mr. Liu's attitude seems to be too flattering but after the last Black Ember Forest incident, Mr. Liu's company lost a lot of money, and powerful monster trainers like him naturally they don't spare any effort to draw in. Gao Peng agreed and said they should meet at the school gate after school. The school ends, then Gao Peng was in Mr. Liu's car and apologized to Mr. Liu for convenience. Mr. Liu smiled and said it was okay because he was also on his way, and it happens that his daughter was in Gao Peng's school, so he came to pick her up from their school as well. Mr. Liu's daughter named Liu Zheyu tells Mr. Liu that he only come to her school the second time to her school this year, and the first time was at the beginning of the school year. Mr. Liu laughs and changes the topic by asking Gao Peng if he has time to look and help Zheyu Beast. Gao Peng look at Zheyu's beast and said her cat-like beast is relatively rare. Zheyu beast named Mint Cat, it was level 12, and its quality was normal. Mint Cat attribute is a wood system and its weakness is the water system. Gao Peng tells Zheyu that he's in the studio on Saturdays and Sundays and she can meet him in the studio on weekends, which made Zheyu happy. Mr. Liu arrives at their apartment building, then he asks Zheyu to go home first because he and Gao Peng still have things to do. Zheyu got down in the car and said goodbye to Gao Peng, while Gao Peng wondered why Mr. Liu left her daughter to go home first when he was going to meet friends, and Gao Peng thinks the situation is getting stranger and stranger. Gao Peng asks Mr. Liu what are the identities of his friends, but Mr. Liu just said Gao Peng will know when they arrive. Gao Peng and Mr. Liu arrive at the place, then Mr. Liu asks Gao Peng to follow him. While Mr. Liu and Gao Peng were walking, Gao Peng notices that the place is decorated in the style of a landscape garden, probably the work of a master who is well versed in the design of the northern and southern gardens and Gao Peng thinks Mr. Liu friend's identity must not be simple. 
Mr. Liu and Gao Peng arrive at the dining table and Mr. Liu introduce Gao Peng to Captain Song Si of the Firefly Hunting Team and Captain Zhang Gu of the Sky Star Hunters. But Captain Zhang said he didn't expect the mystery that Mr. Liu said is a young boy. Gao Peng thinks that it's not a coincidence that all the people sitting there are from monster hunting teams, and the eyes of these people looking at him were filled with temptation and doubt that made him feel very uncomfortable. Mr. Liu said they should start the dinner. Suddenly Captain Zhang said wait a minute and look at Gao Peng. Captain Zhang asks Gao Peng why he doesn't look happy and if they come too abruptly and make him unhappy. Captain Song asks Zhang if he came there to scare a child and if it spread that some of them were bullying a student. It's going to be very shameful. Mr. Liu explained that he didn't make an appointment with Gao Peng, so he didn't know they had so many good friends there. Then Mr. Liu apologized to everyone in the room. Captain Zhang responded that they tried to know Gao Peng for a long time, and they always wanted to meet him in person to get some advice, but is really hard to find. Then Captain Zhang asked Gao Peng to drink with them. Also the other people in the room asks Gao Peng to drink with them. Gao Peng thinks the group of people in the room seems to be passionate, but their words are loaded. Obviously, they don't seem to come to the place just to have a good meal. Mr. Liu gives Gao Peng a glass of wine and then Mr. Liu apologizes to him because he didn't arrange the situation properly. But Gao Peng thinks he created value for Mr. Liu that far exceeded what he was paying him. In other words, Mr. Liu owes him. But now Mr. Liu was planning something at him. Gao Peng wanted to see how the feast is going to be. Captain Zhang put his chopstick down and said he was a rough man, and he had something he wanted to say to Gao Peng. Captain Zhang said Gao Peng is young and capable, also he had a 100% promotion rate. Captain Zhang also said that he doesn't know if Gao Peng is as magical as the rumors say he is. Gao Peng responded that the main reason for his situation is for the love and care of the examiner Feng. Then Gao Peng tell Captain Zhang that if he need anything, he can come to their company for consultation. Captain Zhang said Gao Peng words are too raw. And since Gao Peng is a friend of Mr. Liu, Gao Peng is also a friend of his, and friends help each other, then Captain Zhang asks Gao Peng why should the company take part in it. The other captain said Captain Zhang is right, and tried to convince him to help them for free. Gao Peng looked at them angrily while thinking the group of people in front of him thinks he was an idiot. Gao Peng left the dinner, and suddenly Mr. Liu and the other captains called for him. But Gao Peng said he was just a high school student who hasn't been in the industry for a long time, so he can't afford to take on such an important task. Mr. Liu said it was all his fault because he didn't arrange the party properly and he asks Gao Peng to let him drive him. Gao Peng showed his phone and said no need because he already made an appointment for a car in advance. The car arrived, then Gao Peng left. The other captain thinks Gao Peng is ungrateful, then Mr. Liu apologizes to the other captain because he only had good intentions. The other captain said alright and go inside because Mr. Liu was kind enough to invite them. Suddenly someone touched Mr. Liu's shoulder, Captain Zhang tells Mr. Liu that he helped him to target Gao Peng and provoke his relationship with other groups, so the favor Mr. Liu did for him in the Black Ember Forest is over. Mr. Liu tells Captain Zhang that they were a lifelong friend and they should help each other more, but Captain Zhang disagree and said one rule is one rule, they are not friends. Captain Zhang turns around at Mr. Liu while thinking that Gao Peng helped him so much, in order to tie him to his boat he has to set him up, and Captain Zhang called Mr. Liu old fox, 